There's a warning today that planned cuts to MOD police could have serious consequences for national security. It comes from the body which represents them, the Defence Police Federation, which claims the proposals to reduce numbers by a third and the budget by almost a half are unnecessarily severe. In a moment, we'll be hearing from the national chairman of the Federation, but first, Kyle Lark rounds up the issues. The MOD police is responsible for a wide range of defence sites, from patrolling military housing estates to protecting the country's nuclear deterrent. They police 86 locations across the UK, including naval dockyards, and also investigate a wide range of crimes, from fraud to assisting in the repatriation of personnel killed on operations. But just before Easter, the MOD announced it needs to make savings, which would see around 1,000 jobs axed and the budget reduced by almost 50%. Today, the defence Police Federation has been meeting MPs to warn that the reductions would mean they won't be able to meet all their obligations. Departments include crime scene investigation, the armed response unit, community police officers and the criminal investigations department. They say CID in particular would be reduced by 90%. No site protected by MOD police has ever been the subject of a terror attack, but members of the force assisted Home Office police following the 7-7 bombings and the failed attack on Glasgow Airport. If the cuts go ahead, the Federation says its numbers would drop from 3,035 this year to 2,100 by 2013. An MOD spokesman says safeguarding our sites people and assets, in particular those associated with our nuclear programme, remains a central priority. We have, however, concluded we can make sensible and prudent reductions in the number of guarding and civil policing posts at some of our sites, whilst continuing to maintain effective security. The Federation is also concerned that further savings would have to be made in future years. If the cuts go ahead, other security organisations, including the regular constabulary, would pick up some of the slack. Kyle Ark, Forces News. Well, earlier I spoke to Eamon Keating, the national chairman of the Defence Police Federation, before his briefing to MPs. I began by asking him what he thought the greatest risk to national security would be. Because we are uh, attested constables and we work with the um, consent of the public, we work from the outside in. We don't sit within an establishment and physically secure that and, and harden it and wait for an attack to come and then repel it. We get out into the community, we use intelligence, we're part of the National Police Service. So our approach is a far more uh, layered approach, working with the local communities, working with the local population, the establishment, and then all the intelligence networks as well. So our concern is that if that's reduced, it will revert back to private security or military presence, which will be more of a reactive security. You talk about the way um, you can get involved with the community and perhaps thwart a potential attack before it happens. Why do you think your powers are any better than regular community policing and the regular police? Uh, we don't. We've, we have the same powers. Uh, but what our, community, uh, what our police officers would do from establishment is, is we would be dedicated to that and that alone. So the work that we would do with the local community is, is, is on a slightly different priority. We, our priority is defending the establishment that we're policing. Uh, the local home office will, will be looking at the local community. So those two, or the, albeit the powers are the same and, and the way in which we work is exactly the same, our priorities would be slightly different. Um, married quarters is a prime example where we have significant numbers of military families all living together. Um, that requires a dedicated personal touch of policing. Uh, these communities are, are, are move around the country regularly. They, they don't necessarily have their roots and their family support network where they're living. Uh, and when a when a, a group of, of military personnel or armed forces deploy, we're left with a, an estate of what could be regarded as, I suppose, single parent families that, and all the problems that come with that, with having one of the loved ones abroad in theatre. The government argues it can make cuts while maintaining effective security. Can any cuts be made, in your opinion? Uh, we believe that, that reductions in, in the overall cost can be made, but we are concerned that this is being financially driven. Um, however, we believe that police officers could be used in a far more intelligent and flexible way, which would give us better value for money for the department, and thereby reduce the costs overall, whilst gaining and keeping their policing experience and expertise.